Hey, listen, you don't have to go to a museum to see art. You can see it as you walk along the path of life. So I'm visiting Chicago. Bend, Oregon. The Mississippi Delta. New York City. Detroit. Wilmington, North Carolina. And I walked around the side of the block. And it just stopped me, and I was just like, what the? Just kind of shocks you awake or something in the middle of your day. And I thought, wow. That's something that's really beautiful. They're shadowed and use all these vibrant colors and... I just remember sitting there with tears streaming down my face. It looks like a kind of lima bean or something. <laughs> <laughs> this art all around us. I discovered this incredible sculpture while driving through Detroit. It's this monument to Joe Lewis. In Chicago in the summer, they would have, at the band shell, they would have free concerts. Today I was walking and I noticed chalk drawings on the ground. It's so moving to see that. An explosion of art. 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 The art. Makes me want to write and sing and act. Keep your eyes open, keep your antennas up, and, and, and be aware. You know, it's here. Presenting our first Spotlight Initiative Award is director of the 2022 Sundance Selection, Bring on the Dancing Horses, Michael Polish. Now we have to start talking about Catherine and Bosworth. So I'm honored to present this award. I'm also very thankful for Tim Daly and Robin Bronk because without those two, you don't get leadership. And I say this from my heart because Artists don't get a lot of this without a lot of leadership. However, let's jump into the, like the grind of it all. And the grind of this is you can Google Kate, you can Google what she's done, but you can't get the real story of how she is in real life. So let me just make the setting. I probably have two minutes. I'll take four. I might take six. I might take three. Um, Setting is Montana. There's a bar. It's a famous bar. And it's a bar that we know very well. It's secret to most, but it's a <coughs> And this bar had a local rodeo down the street. And this local rodeo said, there's a lot of bull riders tonight. Well, we watched the bull riders. And there's a lot of bull riders. And as it is, Kate decided when she walked into this bar one night that she would say, hey, I think I can ride a bull. And um, all the cowboys in that bar said, you're 110 pounds. On a good day, you're 112 pounds. What are we going to do? What are we gonna do with this? Uh, there's a 2,000 pound beast that you're going to strap your legs on. And she said, I can ride that bull. Well, we don't we do have ranches in Montana. We didn't have the bull for her to strap her legs onto, so we wanted to hear her story. Whiskey was involved, and whiskey does prove a lot of things right. Best relationship most people have until you have to break up with it. So what's nice about Kate is that she gets up on the bar and demonstrates how she's going to ride this 2,000-pound bull backwards and forwards and says, <clears throat> This is going to be a good situation. It's going to be a good situation. And these are cowboys and they're bull riders. And what's nice about Kate being an actor is she demonstrates what the sounds, the feeling, all the things is going to happen when she rides this bull. Cowboys in the bar say, we're pretty impressed. We're pretty impressed. 110 pounds against 2,000 pounds. Even cowboys have science and they have logistics. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And this is where the most endearing thing about Kate is. She will always take the bull by the horns. As it's a cliche, how we do things, she will always prove the room wrong. And she's done that with her career. She changes from the day she started, from horse whisper, from when a day we call it Hamilton, whatever she does, she does something different. It's a fucking really hard place to live. And she does it every single day. She could take another career. It'd be very, very easy to be a comedy actor. It'd be very easy to be a dramatic actor. She just does it all the time. 
She took the impossible. It's not an easy way what she does. It doesn't, it's not easy to be a beautiful blonde that walks into a bar and say, I'm here. Let's get real, guys. Let's get real. She's a beautiful, beautiful person. It's not easy. She grinds and she grinds and she grinds. So I'm very, very honored to give her the Spotlight Award. One, because I've known her for a decade, but I've also known her for a lifetime. So here we go. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I'm so uh, grateful to you for, for saying all those beautiful and, um, uh, true, some, some true, I'm thinking about this bar and laughing and, uh, for, for all the, uh, the laughs, <laughs> for all the laughs we've had. Um, thank you to the creative coalition for all that you do in support of the arts. Um, Tim and Robin, you, you are such a necessary force for good. And thank you to the Sundance Film Festival for supporting and nurturing the spirit of independence in filmmaking. Um, Michael and I first devised Bring on the Dancing Horses when the world was shutting down over Chinese food and a puddle of tears. The tears, by the way, were mine. Um, like most of us, I was terrified of the unknown, of the instability and the potential inability to create. To create is life if we are not able to create what is life. Artists are given a voice to communicate the times, to express a relevant narrative, to push boundaries and to make us feel. We both realized that if we were to try and achieve all of the above with an innovative project and in wildly uncertain times, we would need a heck of a lot of support, determination, vision, and the secret ingredient all artists are intimately familiar with, courage. Michael wrote all 10 episodes of the series during lockdown. I read each script as he finished typing them, ink fresh from, from the printer. We adore the Western genre, and yet we were interested in something new. A splash of noir, a whisper of philosophy, and a whole lot of badassery. Our passion for flipping the traditional gender stereotype from a male lead in a Western landscape to a female felt innovative and exciting. My character is simply known throughout much of the series as the woman. This is a Montana bred project through and through. We filmed all 10 episodes in Butte, Montana, once the richest city in our country and is still known by those who live there as Butte, America. Michael and I raised the funding totally independently through a private investor from this great state who understood our vision and for this partnership and belief, we are deeply grateful. It takes a bright mind and a barrel of guts to see beyond and to the edge of the horizon. What may not exist now will surely become the norm tomorrow. To live in the new certainly has its challenges, but this space is also the most exhilarating and thrilling for an artist or entrepreneur to exist. This is the stuff of deep space, and it takes the mind and the heart of an astronaut to float further and to dig deeper. While we may be some of the first to make a completed series totally independently, we are confident this formula is the next frontier of filmmaking, and I look forward to watching this space. Uh, I wouldn't be here today accepting this award without Michael Polish, AKA the astronaut. I share this award with him as our series was born of a true partnership, and this partnership I will cherish all my days. Our spirit will always reside in the heartbeat of the Wild West, a TV series, a creative partnership, a spaghetti Western, a country song. So with that said, I'll put a quarter in the jukebox and close with lyrics from one of the greatest of all time, George Strait. <clears throat> this song's title is a truth so deep and perfect to me, it is the meaning of life. And this song is called Love is Everything. Love is everything. It's a whole lot more than going to the store for a wedding ring. It's a kissing and a hugging, but it's also the kicking and the cussing thing, I've been told. Love is everything. It's looking out for everybody else, but number one. And it's all that really matters when all is said and done and the race is run. Love is everything. It's a rose on a stone. It's the words in a song that the choir sings. It's the tears of goodbye and the place that you fly to to get your wings. Yeah, love's the king. Love is everything. Thank you. 
Presenting our next award is director of the film, After Yang, premiering this week at the 2022 Sundance Film Festival, Kogo Nada. Hi, everyone. Uh, I wanted to first thank uh, Creative Coalition for Coalition this great for this bottle great of wine. Snoop, get some. <laughs> Snoop Red Wine, which uh, my sons really love. Uh, they didn't drink it, but they, they, they loved the, the packaging of it. Uh, but I also want to thank them for their commitment to the arts, uh, which we all know that art is not merely a thing or an activity, but it's transformative. And, you know, if you are, we're a first generation immigrant family. Uh, I was uh, mostly uh, grew up in a working class environment. And uh yeah, the, the way in which art helps you navigate the world and the space that it creates for you was so significant for me. So I really appreciate the work of the Creative Coalition. You know, my father used to always tell me that art is uh, not an activity, but a way of seeing, you know, a way of seeing the world uh, artfully. That, that was our responsibility to see it uh, in all of its beauty and messiness and complexity. And I think about that when I think of uh, Justin, uh, because, you know, uh, when I first met uh, Justin, I was so immediately struck by his um, sensitivities to things both uh, present and absent, uh, his way of seeing humanity, his way of seeing everyday life, his way of seeing his family, which is uh, very important to him, and, um, and his craft. And, you know, I I first saw him on a tape uh, for this, uh, uh, the, uh, the role of Yang in my film. And, uh, you know, you, my producers, you know, I immediately said, uh, I, you know, this, this is Yang, you know, I, I, we, you know, they said, well, we have to look at a couple more peop uh, people, but uh, there was just something so uh, deeply present uh, about him that made me lean into him. And then when I got to meet him, he was a real embodiment of this artful way of seeing the world. Um, I feel like he was not only an exemplary uh, actor, but uh, a human being, a human being. And even before acting, you know, he was a writer and he really is the, uh, uh, has this sort of soul of an inquisitive um yeah, being in this world and, and uh, acting is just one part of it. So it is um, just an incredible honor. And, and I'm so pleased to present uh, Justin H. Min with the 2022 Spotlight Initiative Award. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Kognata, for those incredibly kind words. Um, thank you again to, to Tim Daly and Robin Bronk and everyone at the Creative Coalition for this uh, incredible honor. And I'm so grateful to be here alongside uh, three of my favorite actors, people I am huge fans of. And uh, I obviously already mentioned to Joshua in our breakout room, but I need to give a quick shout out to Joshua Jackson's wife, Jody Turner Smith, who's also in our film. And uh, one of the big reasons I'm also sitting here today because she was such a joy to work with. And uh, yeah, I love you, Joshua, but I also really love your wife. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I totally understand. I get it. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, After Yang is a film that ostensibly is about grief and loss, but I think for me, it's, it's a film about hope as well and the resilience of, of the human spirit. And I feel like at a time when we feel uh, so disconnected with each other in, some, in so many ways, I mean, we're doing this Zoom right now. Right now. I'm hopeful that this reminds us of the human experience and the fact that we are uh, more connected to each other than we might believe otherwise. Um, arts has completely changed my life. Arts education has completely transformed who I am. I think I grew up as a kid who wasn't quite in touch with his emotions, uh, was often told not to express my emotions, and it was only through my first theater class that I was able to tap into those things for the first time and really express myself and find a voice that I never really realized was there. So I'm so thankful for that. Uh, thank you again so much for uh, this honor. And um, yes, I will also be enjoying this uh, Snoop Dogg wine. 
Presenting our next award is two-time Tony Award-nominated costume designer who worked with our next honoree on the Broadway hit Children of a Lesser God, Dide Aite. Hi everyone, I'm extremely honored to be here with you all this evening. It seems only fitting that this year's Spotlight Initiative Award should be presented to Joshua Jackson. Uh, this award is for making a positive difference in the world and I can't think of anyone more deserving than him. From his involvement with National Geographic's years of living dangerously since 2016 to his work with Surfrider Foundation and Oceania, Joshua remains dedicated to environmental activism and cares deeply about solving climate change and saving the world's oceans. He has always been an inspiration with his selflessness generosity and passionate commitment to every cause. Most recently in his role as chairman of Liquid Media Group, Joshua has made it his mission to find and support companies in the entertainment space that are creating content with social impact. IndieFlix is a great example with its film series that helps children learn to talk about mental health issues and race. The series has been so impactful that it was adopted by the California education system, which recognized its massive power to positively impact the lives of every child statewide. I'm so proud to be here to present my good friend, Joshua Jackson with this award. Thank you today. I think you actually made me really, really blush. Not fake <laughs> blush, really actual blush. Um, first thing I wanna say is, so today is a close personal friend of mine. And we've all been in this pandemic and it has been, I think, a year and a half since we've had a chance to see each other. And it is just marvelous to see your face. Thank you so much for those kind words. Um, I would also like to thank Tim and Robin, um, one, for this lovely award. And two, uh, for all the work they do here at the C Creative Coalition, because like so many of the people who have come before me uh, on here tonight, my life has been deeply impacted by having access to the arts long before I was ever involved uh, in performing or now running my company. And the mission to make art accessible to everybody, particularly to young people so that we can um, encourage the human race to further the conversation beyond where it is right now it, it is deeply personal to me. And I think possibly the most important thing that we all can be engaged in. So thank you so much for the work that you do. And, Tonight, I am very flattered to get this award, but I'd like to think that it's actually more um, an award for my whole company, for the whole team that we have at Liquid Media, who is trying to support the independent film world, navigate this modern wild west that we're all in, trying to figure out uh, amazing opportunities, but incredible difficulties. And the reason that we're here at Sundance is because like that I mentioned, our, our uh, subsidiary company, our partner company, IndieFlix, is making its film Angst available to the whole world for free for the next 10 days. So more than anything, what I would like to do is invite everybody who's on this Zoom to go to IndieFlix.com and watch this film. It is an amazing opportunity to see children talking about their own mental health and their own coping mechanisms to deal with their own anxiety married with educators, married with mental health professionals, to open up a discussion for your children, if you have children, inside your home, inside of your business. I can't take credit for this film. It is the work of a woman named Sheila Andreen, who's somewhere in one of these Zooms, and she's an amazing motherfucker. And if you have a chance to speak to her, I highly recommend you do. But this is the type of work that makes me happy to do this job. It makes me happy to have founded my company. It makes me happy to have been given the gift to work inside of the arts for 30 years. And now I have the ability to give something back to both our community and the community at large. So please go and check out this movie, Angst. It's excellent. Thank you so much. I do not have Snoop's wine, but I have some of Hawaii's finest. So I'm going to enjoy that in its stead. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. And thank you today. I can't wait to see you. Presenting the final award for the 2022 Creative Coalition Spotlight Initiative Awards for Independent Film is actor from the star's hit BMF and the Netflix top trending worldwide smash hit Lost in Space, Russell Hornsby. Good evening, everyone. Um, just want to say um, it's an honor to be here. Um, hey, Regina, love to you. Um, the great writer and poet Renyard Kipling once said, if you can 
talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and queens and not lose the common touch. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And I believe that this is Regina Hall. Regina gives from her soul and not from the expectations of others. This uh, woman possesses light, laughter, and love. She is steeped in humanity and walks with empathy with her feet firmly on the ground. And I, I saw all of this in her long before ever having the pleasure to work with her. Uh, Regina, you are a force. It was an honor to work alongside you on the hate you give and bring the story to life. I salute your accomplishments and I'm excited to witness your future. And thus far, I feel your work embodies the mission of the Creative Coalition as you work to champion the art and craft of independent filmmaking and the power of how storytelling brings messages that make a difference. Regina's work embodies the pursuit of truth as she holds dear to the, the necessity of the power of the arts and how the freedom of expression changes lives. Now, Sidney Poitier once said, living consciously involves being genuine, listening and responding to others honestly and openly. It involves being in the moment. And Regina, this is your moment and you are the embodiment of this honor. And it is my absolute pleasure to present my friend Regina Hall with the 2022 Spotlight Initiative Award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. First of all, um, Russell, I just, I love you as an actor, as an artist and um, as a man. So I wanna just thank you so much. I, I couldn't, you were my the first person I thought of. So thank you for being here. Um, Russell and I worked together and I hope everyone saw that he gave an incredible performance in The Hate You Give. And it was um, such a class to work opposite him. I'd also like to thank everyone at the Creative Coalition, uh, Tim Daly, Barb Horvath, and Robin Bronx. So thank you so much for honoring, for this honor today. Um, I'm holding up my award, because I got it. Uh, I, I, um, I am very thankful to the arts. I, I started acting. Um, and thought about it professionally. Later in my 20s, my father had a stroke suddenly, and um, it started off as an idea that someone said to make extra cash uh, for commercials, and I was quickly rejected from everything and realized, oh, it's not a pastime, it's an art form. And I, I, I then decided it is something to be enjoyed, but also to be respected. And so at that point, I decided, oh, I must go to school again, mother. So that was, um, of course, what my mother thought was an extension of unemployment. And perhaps indeed it was. Um, as <laughs> I went back to school for a third time after my master's, I went to Columbia Bartending School because I told her I would need a job to pay my way to acting school. So it was, it was quite a bit of schooling. Um, and I didn't learn to bartend, actually. I just got drunk. You're supposed to spit it out. If any of you ever bartended, or went to bartending school. But it, it, what I did love was that the process of what I discovered. There's so much discovering in, in, in performance, in, in the arts. And I feel like it's, it's really never ending. Um, this year, actually last year already, I started a production company, RH Negative. The reason for that was there is so much talent that is out there. There are so many stories. And... I want to be a part of storytelling from every aspect. I am honored and excited for the two films that um, are in Sundance this year. The first is by an incredible um, young woman, um, a black woman, uh, Mariama Diallo, called Master. She wrote it. She directed it. Um, it takes place in it's in the horror genre, and it takes place in the world of academia, where they're um, it, it's in a fictitious Ivy League institution where um, diversity um, is still lacking. Um, and she talks about um, those experiences through a genre of horror. It is so smart, so deliberate. And I'm really proud to be a part and, and executive produce that. And I hope to tell more stories like that. The second film is Honk for Jesus by another incredible young black female writer and producer. And her name is Adama Ebo. 
her producing partner is her sister, Adane Evo. They're twins, and they're incredible new voices in storytelling. Um, that is a, called Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul, and it is about many um, themes in the evangelical community and in the black church, and um, it addresses so many things that are important. And I think the beauty of storytelling is that we can watch and be a part and be a force of telling stories that we don't normally get to see. Um, Joshua, I really applaud your um, interest in the environment. I believe that as a species of humans, if we don't start to save that, the planet, <laughs> none of it really matters. We won't have a place for those stories to be seen or told. So I also support that and work with um, Solutions Project, um, which is also um, really about saving our planet. And things like um, the Creative Coalition um, really matter. I have to be honest, I will offer my support from now on, especially understanding what you do, um, what theater means in many communities, especially communities of color is so important. Um, it's so important as you um, open opportunities in festivals like Sundance, you make a difference for the images that shape not just the imagination of, 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 young, of young little kids around the world. It continues to expand it in a way that I think is interesting and important for people to see and digest. So it is with, with deep honor and deep gratitude. Shout out to Sue, who I love. <laughs> um, and um, to the Creative Coalition, everyone who's here, who is just supporting this night. And um, congratulations to um, the other honorees. I, I support and applaud your work, everything that you guys are doing, everyone watching. Um, and again, Russell, um, I can't wait to be somewhere honoring you. And if I'm not asked to intro you, I'll be offended. Um, and that's very honest. Um, <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie. And so um, thank you again. And I hope everyone has an amazing, um, Sunday.